Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. When it comes to living your life, do you feel swept up by external forces that are beyond your control? It's as though you're being carried away from what's important to you, unable to shape your own destiny. Or perhaps you wonder if there's more to life than just reacting to what's happening around you. What if you had the power to shape your reality from the inside out? In this summary, we'll explore three core approaches that will allow you to access and live your full potential. First, we'll show you how to reclaim your imagination to consciously craft a more empowering life story. Then, we'll dive beneath the surface of your thoughts to reconnect with an essential source of wholeness and well-being. And lastly, we'll discover how embracing averageness can paradoxically lead to extraordinary results. Ready to break free from self-limiting beliefs and reconnect with your inner wisdom? Let's begin. Chapter 1. Directing Your Life Story Have you ever felt like life is just happening to you, rather than feeling in control of your own destiny? What if you had the power to shape your reality through the art of make-believe? As children, we intuitively understood the joy and creative potential of make-believe. But somewhere along the way, most of us got real. That is, we bought into the notion that our objective circumstances define us. We started seeing ourselves as subject to outside forces beyond our control as victims, in a way. But what if we could reclaim the power of our imagination? What we believe tends to become true for us. Our beliefs act as self-fulfilling prophecies, filtering our perceptions and shaping our actions. For example, Tandy believes he's socially awkward, so at parties he holds back and avoids mingling, confirming his belief that socializing is painful. Meanwhile, Ling believes she can connect with anyone and so she dives into conversations with ease, reinforcing her confidence. Two people can experience the exact same situation very differently, depending on the thoughts and meanings they assign to it. Change your thoughts, change your world, as the saying goes. So how do we change our thoughts? By deliberately choosing to make believe new empowering ones even before we fully believe them. And by acting as though they're already true. Here's how it works. First, identify an area of life you'd like to transform, such as relationships, career, or health. Write down how you'd like to feel and what you'd love to create. Next, brainstorm some beliefs that would support you if you truly held them, even if they feel like a stretch now. For example, if your goal is to become the top-selling salesperson at your company, your supporting belief might be selling is easy and fun for me. Write these new beliefs down. Repeat them to yourself daily with enthusiasm and conviction. Vividly imagine how you'd think and behave differently if you fully embrace them. Additionally, gather evidence to support them even if you need to start small. You can do this by using the format, selling is easy and fun for me. I know this is true for me because, and then fill in the blank with something that happened that day. Next, take actions that align with the belief. Ask yourself the question if I knew my belief was true, how would I behave? Write down your answers. Then start behaving that way. Reclaiming the power of make-believe isn't about positive thinking or denying difficulties. It's about becoming conscious of the stories you tell yourself and intentionally choosing ones that are both true and empowering. So if your current life story isn't to your liking, know that you can change it one thought, one belief, one action at a time. When it comes to the movie of your life, you are the screenwriter, director, and star. Make it a great one. Chapter 2. Clear, Deep Waters Imagine you have a bowl of murky, muddy water, which you want to make clear somehow. How would you do it? Your first instinct might be to boil it, filter it, or stir it around. But the simplest solution? Just let it be. Given time, the dirt will settle and the water's inherent clarity will shine through. The same principle applies to the human mind. 
Beneath the turbulent surface of our thoughts and worries, there is, believe it or not, a deep pool of well-being, wisdom, and clarity. This is our essential nature, though most of us have lost sight of it. From the moment we're born, we instinctively develop strategies to navigate the world and get our needs met. We learn that certain behaviors elicit care and attention. We smile and our parents melt. We cry and they come running. Over time, these strategies become more sophisticated. We discover that achievements earn us praise, that pleasing others earns us love, and that conforming earns us belonging. Layer by layer, we construct personas based on what seems to work the good student, the responsible eldest child, the easygoing friend. These masks aren't inherently bad or false, they're simply ways of coping and connecting. The problem arises when we forget that they're masks. We identify so fully with our personas that we start to believe they're what we fundamentally are. But they're not. There's something deeper underneath. Something peaceful and utterly whole. What if happiness isn't something we need to chase or earn? What if it's our very core? Babies and young children naturally live in a state of openness, ease, and connection. It's only as we grow up that we learn to look to outside conditions for validation and fulfillment. Conditional well-being is fragile and fleeting. But unshakable well-being emerges when we stop searching outside and reconnect with the wisdom within. When we stop trying to rearrange circumstances to make ourselves feel good, we begin to cultivate an inner home base of okayness, even in the midst of difficulty. Here's an idea, for a week, or even just a day, experiment with letting yourself simply be as you are. Don't try to fix or upgrade yourself. Don't work on your confidence. Don't self-help your way to a better you. Instead, just bring loving awareness to the part of you that's always been whole and well. What's it like to simply be in your body, breathing, sensing, without needing to change or understand anything? The more you practice this kind of present moment intimacy, the more you'll reconnect with an inner wellspring of ease, clarity, and wholeness. This wholeness doesn't depend on your roles, your relationships, or your circumstances. From that grounded center, external validation becomes the icing, not the cake. You know who you are, and it's more than enough. Chapter 3 The Trap of Exceptionalism What does it mean to live in a world where everyone is striving to be exceptional? There's a paradox there. If enough people succeed at a particular thing, then it's no longer an exceptional achievement, is it? What was formerly above average simply becomes the new average, the new bar to surpass. Most people will feel like failures, almost by definition. In this relentless pursuit of exceptionalism, we inadvertently create a society full of stress, frustration, and most of all a pervasive sense of never quite being good enough. But what if we dared to question this paradigm? What if, rather than exhausting ourselves in the pursuit of being exceptional at everything, we aimed for consistent, sustainable effort in the areas that truly matter to us? Consider this simple but powerful exercise. Choose an area of your life where you've been putting immense pressure on yourself to excel, like writing, sales, or parenting. Now, take a step back and define what an average day in that domain would look like, a day where you invested a reasonable, sustainable amount of focus, time, and energy. Take writing, for example. An average day might be dedicating 45 minutes to putting words on the page, without worrying about word count or quality. Remember, consistency is key to developing your craft over time. For sales, it could mean contacting five new prospects, focusing on the process rather than the immediate results. Sales is often a numbers game, and steady efforts yield results. For parenting, it might mean carving out a focused half-hour to be fully present with your kids before and after school, without distractions. Small moments of connection add up to strong relationships over time. Now, Project forward and imagine the cumulative effect of stringing together a series of these average days. In just a few months, you'll likely have made quite a bit of progress. 
Within a year, you'll be astonished by how far you've come simply by showing up consistently. Steady, manageable action, repeated daily, yields remarkable results over time. The key is to trust the process and keep showing up. When you stop holding yourself to impossible standards, you create space to relax into a more easeful, organic relationship with your goals and your life. You open the door to what psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi calls flow, a state of total absorption in the process, without being attached to specific outcomes. The irony is that this less stressed, less effortful approach often leads to better results in the long run. As you release harsh expectations and unsustainable work habits, you tap into a deeper wellspring of creativity, resilience, and inspiration. You do less, but achieve more. This is the paradoxical power of embracing your averageness, it frees you up to do your best work. So make friends with good enough, knowing that when it's repeated consistently, you can achieve great results. In the end, the real magic is in the cumulative power of your average days. Final Summary The main takeaway of this summary to Supercoach by Michael Neal is that you have the power to shape your reality and tap into a deep wellspring of creativity and well-being. By reclaiming the art of make-believe, you can consciously choose empowering beliefs and take actions aligned with the life you desire. Remember, beneath the turbulent surface of your thoughts and the roles you play in life, there is an essence underneath. Reconnect with this inner home base of okayness, even amid challenges. Finally, embrace the power of consistent, sustainable effort in the areas that truly matter to you, knowing that good enough, repeated daily, can lead to remarkable results over time. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.